So here in in Red Rock's broadcast room, just to kind of show you around, uh, if we start over there, that's just a multi-track recorder. So I'm literally, it's Reaper. I'm just rolling 64 channels of audio into that guy. That's it. I hit record and I hit stop. Then we get into the Pro Tools world. So Pro Tools is, uh, you know, basically all this. <laughs> it's one computer, it's not a bunch, it's just a bunch of screens. Um, these are S1 uh, controllers. They don't do anything to the audio, they don't provide extra DSP or anything like that. They're 100% just a controller. Everything I can do in Pro Tools with a mouse, or everything these can do, I can do with a mouse. So you don't necessarily need those, these. However, in live world, you really want some faders that you can touch and move because you gotta be able to move quickly, where with a mouse, you can move one fader at a time. Just to go into a controller world just a little bit, um, these, as far as Pro Tools is concerned, are avid pro, pro people who make Pro Tools. Uh, these are the cheapest controller that they make. Okay, so they're they're pretty reasonable priced. They they make controllers that go up to like 90 grand. It's just a controller. It's not doing it. It's not giving you any extra processing. It's giving you faders, right? So my thought is like, why would I spend a high high dollar on some fancy controller when it's a glorified mouse basically? That's all it's doing. So my thought is like, okay, all I really need is a, a few faders. Um, so all of this with the iPads, uh, all the control was like six grand, okay? Which seems a lot, but their next one up just, and it only gives you 16 channels, starts at six grand, okay? So I was like, well, I'll get 25 faders with screens, with visual feedback for quite a bit cheaper. The next one after that is like 20 grand. So it's, it's relatively accessible. Um, you don't have to break the bank with this. Um, now, we had a CL5 in here. CL5, I think, retails for, well, now I think it's like 30 grand, 35 grand. This whole setup with the controllers, with Pro Tools, with the interface for, you know, to get Dante in and out of Pro Tools uh, was like 20 grand. So, uh, you know, we were able to sell the CL5 and buy this whole system, right? So, um, it's not as far out of reach, I think, as a lot of people think. We're not spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so it, it can be pretty accessible. Now, with that being said, this is Pro Tools. If you really want to go uh, even more accessible, you can get Logic for 500 bucks, and you don't need interfa any interfaces with Logic. You can Dante straight in, just like uh, Reaper, and do the whole mix right in Logic. Get yourself Logic, a computer, and some speakers. You can do everything I'm doing here. You have access to the same plugin, same routing, everything. So, um, something to think about if, if that's what you're looking to get into. You'll have to learn logic and learn how to use it, but doable. Um, so, anyway, that's Pro Tools. Then, over here, um, I have some distressors. And these are just compressors. They're hardware-based compressors. Uh, and they, uh, basically, I have a snare, the top one and the three main vocals. Um, now you can get plugins all day long that model these, but there's just nothing like the real thing. Um, so uh, that's what's happening here. So this is a TC Electronics uh, clarity meter. Um, it's a really cool meter. It's like 250 bucks, I think. And maybe a little more, 300 bucks. Uh, but it's a really cool meter. You can look at phase, you can look at, uh, it kind of shows you average uh, volume. Um, and then you have an RTA. Um, I use it to check my overall level going to broadcast, right? So, um, you know, that's a big important thing. We talked about kind of level, uh, you know, mastering level. I usually shoot for negative 10, negative nine to 10 LUFS, which is pretty hot. That's like a hot CD master. Um, most, here's my thing. Most streaming services, Spotify, you know, Apple Music, Tidal, those, they, they prefer like negative 17 LUFS, so 70 be quieter than what I'm giving it. Um, my thought is uh, they manage volume. Most of these guys manage volume, like YouTube manages volume. Um, 
so they want you to shoot kind of where they're with where they play back their audio but what i can tell you is they they never will compress like audio compress your sig your your mix down to get to that level all they're going to do is gain it down so my thought is like and i've had better luck when i mix at cd mastered levels uh negative nine negative ten it sounds a bit hotter on the output on the other end um or it just sounds full when I try to mix and get the, what they recommend, negative 17, it sounds quiet. It comes across a little quieter. So my thought is like, hey, if I'm overshooting what they want, uh, all they're going to do, the worst case of the thing they're going to do is just gain me down a little bit. Um, and, I, you know, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, and I just get better luck with kind of a hot level. So that meter is what I use to make sure I'm kind of hidden around that range. And then we make our way over here. Uh, this is our second dairy recorder, um, just for backup. I'm running tracks live right now. I'm gonna switch it to Reaper. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, but yeah, it works great. And then this screen right here, this is actually remoting into the tracks Ableton computer downstairs. Um, so the MD, the computer that's controlling all the tracks, this is what he's seeing right here. So I can hop in and control it, um, that sort of thing. The other thing is, you know, <coughs> one thing that's I think really important, both for front of house and broadcast, is if you're playing tracks, if you're using tracks, it's really important to mix those tracks just like you mix the band, right? You, uh, sometimes you can get another 24 different instruments coming from tracks. If you're not uh, kind of touching those up and, and mixing them, well, that I mean, that's a that's a lot of tracks that who know what is it doing to your mix, you know? So that's where I remote in and I can actually like go through and like, yeah, I want a little more of the percussion or whatever else. The other thing that's really important is, you know, tracks, multi-tracks can come from a lot of different locations, right? Some are really hot, some are really quiet. So when you put them together in a service, uh, you know, what, you, what can be hard is like one song's real quiet and then the next song comes in and the track's like, whoa, it's all of a sudden you get this big tambourine that's killing you. Um, so going through and ironing that out, so generally all the percussion is the same level, generally all the guitars, all the synths, that sort of sense. So there's no surprises during a service when you're mixing. And your mix sounds congruent. It sounds like it's coming from one service. You know, like I said, we, we had the CL5 before, um, we switched to Pro Tools for two big reasons. The other big reason that I didn't mention was, uh, it you know we want we are using this room as a studio, you know, and not only a live broadcast studio, but actually like a recording studio, right? So <clears throat> we are about to release a new album. Um, we've released a couple singles already: Echo Holy, uh, and um, I think we're releasing one tomorrow actually so well by the time you see this video it'll be out um but yeah we're, we're releasing the album and we did most of it here we did all of it here so we recorded it live on stage um i had all the you know, all the tracks coming in we recorded it and then we came back up here and overdubbed and fixed things added guitar parts added key parts you know produced it up um so it was all we did it all in-house um so when you hear the album, you know, we did it all in this room. Yeah, so that's all done here. And then this, this stuff down here is more analog gear. So this is when we're actually like overdubbing in, you know, here in the studio, um, you know, vocals and guitars and stuff like that. And just some really nice Neve pre's. Uh, and then some nice Neve API and SSL EQs. Um, the other cool thing that we were able to do uh, is we're fortunate enough downstairs um, part of our, our stage rack we have uh, all Neve pre's for drums bass and guitars so um, we have the, what the 1073 OPX their Dante enabled Neve preamps which is super cool so um, so we have uh, kind of the big stuff drums bass guitars all coming through Neve and then just showing up on the Dante network and routing to wherever. So um, our, the front end 
of our capture is about as good as it gets, which is super blessed for that. I'm really thankful for that because that makes a big difference. Basically how Red Rocks works from campus to campus, how we get our content to other campuses is all through Resi. Um, so basically we record our service here at our broadcast location, which is in Littleton, um, and then we stream it uh, through Resi to all of our locations. So we have, uh, you know, it's the video plus eight channels of audio that we're streaming um, to all our locations. So kind of how audio wise, how that fits in is, you know, the, the eight channels of audio, basically what we're doing. Um, channel one is, channel one through three are like the speakers. Okay, so, you know, mostly it's one speaker, so it's channel one, but two, three, um, in case they have like a panel or, or a guest speaker or something like that, it, it's ready and hot. And then channel four is CG, so if we play back video mid-message, that's coming down channel four. Um, and then channel five is more for band stuff. So, or five through eight, I'm sorry. So five is click cues and MD from this location. And then track six is tracks. So the tracks you see here, we, you know, we bust them to mono. And then seven and eight are lead vocals if we need them. And then sometimes on eight, we'll put Simpty. So the lighting, lighting guys at all the locations can actually follow along. So when all this is happening, when we're streaming all this, the satellite locations have, uh, have all the speakers, but the band is actually playing along with Resi. Uh, and sometimes we'll, we'll send the lead vocals from here as well. Okay, so we're having a live band at the, at the satellite location, but the lead vocals coming from our broadcast location as well as tracks and as well as click MD and cues. Okay, so it's, it's really cool because, you know, some, when you have multiple locations or a church that has multiple locations, um, it can kind of feel isolated. Each location can be, you know, you kind of get that isolation happening. Um, sometimes so this is a really good way to make it feel like one church you were streaming the message from one location the bands playing along the the lead singers coming from a location while the band locally is playing along with it so it's incredible what you can do with site to site and multi-site stuff with resi um i'm just i'm tickled every time i even think about it i'm just like I it's incredible that we're able to do this um, and it's seamless. It's it's truly is seamless once once you kind of get the band and everybody following along. Um, it's a really really cool thing. Hopefully that helps uh, helps you guys out. I know it's long winded. You get me talking about audio stuff. I'll talk for days. Um, but hopefully some of this helps out. My goal and what I try to instill on at all of our campuses, both uh, you know uh, front of house, is you know we want. We want to provide a, a high quality experience um, that, you know, if we can even help one person get closer to, to Jesus through good, you know, good production value, then it's all worth it. Um, so that's, that's our goal here. Uh, you know, I feel honored and blessed that I even get to be in this room and, you know, get a mix in front of thousands of people. You know, it might, there's not, they're not here in this room, but, you know, I'm blessed enough that this mix is heard all over the world. So I'm just, yeah, I'm honored to be a part of it.